Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so today I'm gonna be telling you my experience working at Panera. <laughs> so I worked at Panera for six months and I gotta say, Panera is really awesome to work at. I really enjoyed my time there. There is a very immersed culture in bread, which <laughs> your girl loves bread. <laughs> Any bread lover, I uh, think Pan Panera is the place for you. <laughs> they are very uh, passionate about being the bread people. They bake their bread fresh every day. Um, there is an overnight person that I'm aware of that makes like the muffins and, and bakes everything there that I know of. They don't make any of the overnight pastries. I think they're all just delivered, frozen, and then they're just baked. There are a few things that are made by hand, like the croutons we actually do make. We use the baguettes, uh, we'll chop them up, and the mixture is um, already prepackaged, but we do actually bake the, cru the, cr the croutons fresh. Also, there was a huge um, TikTok video that went viral for how Panera does their mac and cheese, um, but that's also how they do their soups, and that's just a very common practice that is used in fast food. People weren't liking it just because Panera is very, very boastful about how fresh and, you know, handmade and just everything's made in in house but that's not no that's not, that's not realistic um so most of their things are made in a thermal bath and then they're go they are transferred to um the containers that we you know then pour out and ladle into food so well, let's say let me get ahead of myself so um so i worked up in there for six months when i actually got the interview i came in um, I met the manager, she's super nice, super sweet, really liked her, she's very headstrong. And then, so there was an interview that I went to and then the actual orientation was like downtown in this building, they rented out a space and it was me and other newly hired uh, people. And they called it, I think it, I, it's been a while, but I think it was like breaking bread and that was their whole thing. And so they brought a whole bunch of bread to like share and um and they brought like lunch that was made you know at a Panera obviously <laughs> um and it was a really really nice experience so what they did was they passed the baguette and you broke off a piece and you were supposed to say your name and I think where you're from but don't quote me on that but that was their initiation process into the whole you know bringing you into the company which is Honestly, the first time I've ever done that with a company and I just, it was a very nice, nice uh, way to be welcomed into a company, which I actually forgot to mention on my Starbucks video when I talked about um, how they initiate you into their company, they actually do do a coffee tasting with you. So I'm sorry I forgot that, but they do a coffee tasting with you, which essentially is basically uh, the coffee you do a taste test together with the coffee and you're looking for the taste, the smell, and the notes of the coffee, uh, you know, what it first hits when you first sip it. And um, that also is a really good experience. But anyways, going back, um, talking about Panera. So yeah, it's a really awesome like seminar and you sit there with a bunch of different people who just got hired, you break bread, you talk, um, and you just learn about the company and where they started from. And it's a really awesome experience. Um, I, If I remember correctly, they do franchise. So sometimes it'll be corporate, sometimes it'll be franchise. It just depends. The one I worked for, I believe, was a franchise. Um, and then I remember them being a big franchise. And when I say big, I mean they had like six stores, which is considered big for a franchisee. Um, but yeah, so that was the initiation process. It was That was the orientation process, and it was a really wonderful process. I loved it, and I really think more companies should do that. And then I was, ta I was back at my store, um, and I started off at POS, which usually is standard for any fast food. You start off doing POS. Um, register and uh you have a trainer they have designated trainers you are assigned to a trainer and the trainer will go ahead and stay with you they are not to leave you no matter what and they basically just stay with you day to day they train you on the floor 
and you know you are just live live and in color <laughs> um from what i remember there literally is no i don't remember there being any like book work or any computer work it might have changed actually i'm sorry so there was a lot of computer work that i did which went into the details of just like panera's coffee and Panera's food and things like that and they're very boastful about their coffee too like they they well they want you to know that they're like really deep rooted into coffee as well but there was a lot of I remember there being a lot of computer work and then once I was done with the computer I finally went um on to POS with my trainer and I believe the training wasn't that bad it was like maybe a week or so I think it was like a week it really isn't that long and yeah like I said I really enjoyed it they are very very strict so Panera does have the strict dress policy the strict dress code policy I don't know if it's a little chillax now it doesn't look like it last time I went in but you have to tuck in your shirt which for me was very uncomfortable because um I'm a big goyle <laughs> and I really didn't feel comfortable with having everybody be very aware of my muffin top so for me that was very uncomfortable and I even asked my manager I was like listen you know I wouldn't ask unless I really really needed this but I am very uncomfortable having my shirt tucked in you know is there any way that you could make an exception and she was just like I'm so sorry I can't and I was like, okay, sure, I'll, I'll be uncomfortable, um, sure. <laughs> so that was pretty crappy. Um, but other than that, like I said, they were very strict. It had to be pastel colors. You had to wear khaki pants or just beige pants and, um, you know, non-slips. And you had to wear a hat. Your hair had to be in a bun or a tight, uh, neat ponytail, um, you know, no hoop earrings, nothing like that. Uh, no, um, you couldn't have polish. So yeah, it was pretty strict. And then with the POS, they are, were very, very like hardcore strict with you could not leave that POS. That POS and you were like tight the whole shift. And they did this thing where sometimes, you know, they would have someone come and help you. There'd be like a one and a two. Um, because they had a, they have a breakfast and then they have a lunch. So when you switch off from breakfast, you now do your lunch menu. And so sometimes it get pretty confusing because for me, I'm a multitasker. So I like to take an order, fill an order, you know, and do all that. But for me, I had to stand there and take the order and just kind of go like, did you get that? You, you, okay. You don't, okay. So you don't need me to get it. Oh, okay. But she's still waiting for her souffle are you gonna oh okay like it, a lot of it was just me being nervous and anxious that no one was gonna get the food because then you know you have that moment where the customer comes up to you and goes i haven't gotten my food yet and i need to go i'm going to be late and i didn't want to have to deal with that so um, and there were several times when I had, she forgot my souffle and I have to go when I'm late and I don't want the other person to take it and it's mine. And it was just like a total, like very stressful. <laughs> but, and then they also had this cool bread machine that you can, you can pick thick or thin and you can slice whole breads and uh, my favorite part. The little things that you were allowed to do was to like tidy up your area or like maybe do a little stocking but even that was too much they kind of left it up to the uh support role and it was hard because every single thing i needed i was like hey could you hey when you get a chance hey do you think you could and so it was very annoying um for that aspect and then um they also do something really awesome though at the end of the night they do donate all of their unused all their unused all of their unsold pastries and breads to um a charity that's pretty cool and from what i hear every panera does that so that's also pretty cool that they donate um every day uh every night um whatever is not sold uh so um all that aside my cons were that not being able to really leave my register being glued to my register um and then I was there for six months and I didn't get to do any other role other than POS. I did support. I did like some back, back room stuff and that's it. I never got to touch food. <laughs> Actually, I made it a little close to food. I did like drinks 
for a little bit and that was it after that I, I never ever got to touch food and I tried real hard but their their reason for not letting me do that was oh you have to be here six months before you can do food and I was like what why so long like if I'm showing you know I'm showing uh incur you know I'm showing the 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 eagerness and that the drive to want to you know train everywhere and they was just very like no when we're ready you know when you're ready we'll do this we'll do that and it was just very like on their pace and it wasn't on my pace and so I was constantly just kind of being pushed 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 back to register um and that was very annoying for me uh also the managers were interesting so Panera that I've heard has a really bad rap for having bad managers and that was pretty much the reason why I ended up leaving Panera um, was because unfortunately I ended up getting a bad manager. Um, so I had my great manager who I had who had hired me. And then of course I only had her for about maybe a few months. When I say few, I mean like three months maybe. And then she was leaving and um, you know, she was like, oh, no, this new person is coming in. It's going to be really nice. She's really sweet. I've met her. They always say the same thing. Don't ever fall for it. Um, and so she came. And at first, she was really nice, you know. And we all were like, okay, I'm feeling her. She's really nice. And then all of a sudden, she turned into super, super bitch mode. Um, and she was just this hardcore, really mean not understanding at all super hard to approach and talk to and it was like you spoke to her and she would just like not hear what you were saying and already think of her next response and so I already knew she wasn't listening to what I was saying um and it was just back and forth and at first it didn't really bother me but then there was a particular day <laughs> that was my final straw and I'm gonna tell you what that was so um on this particular day, I have my period. And normally for me, on my first days, my period is the worst. I will be in excruciating pain. And I mean, when I was younger, not so much now, thank God. But when I was younger, I went through a period, a time where my periods would, my first day would come. And I got such bad pain that I would get like dizzy and nauseous. And it was just, it was bad. So you know immediately when I knew it was happening I had to you know get something to eat take some pills and just kind of sit and just like just prepare for the worst um but unfortunately I couldn't do that because I had to work and I had to stand at the register and I couldn't really take a break so and mind you literally I got it while I was at work I didn't have it before it wasn't like I knew I got it at work you know you feel it so I felt it and I was like oh my god oh and I was wearing beige khakis so yeah I had to go <laughs> I had to take care of this so I was like oh um so I had immediately let I let somebody know but then I finally went up to her and I just told her I said you know I'm so sorry but I just got my period you know I just need to put on a pad you know and eat something and I'll be I'll be right there you know I'll be I'll be back on the floor and she said she said okay you know and she was just like all right well I mean don't make it too long you know like she was just really mean about it and I'm like okay guess you haven't had yours yet you know so you know I had went ahead I put a pad on real quick and I went ahead and I ate my snack and literally as I was trying to eat my snack and drink it and try and I was rushing as I was trying to do all of this she literally would come in the back and just watch me and just go like and then leave and then come back and go she'd be like all right you know you're almost done I need you out there like just continuously like hounding me and I was just like whoa so I finished I hurry up I drank my pills and I was, of course, still in pain. I was, I, those pills were not going to do nothing, okay? Usually those pills, my pills kick in like 30 to 45 minutes. So I knew it wasn't going to do anything. So I knew I was in this for the long run and I was just going to have to battle this out. So I had finished. I went back on the floor. I was leaning on the counter and I'm just like standing there just 
I don't know, trying to just imagine my pain away. And I mean, leaning, leaning. And of course, they don't want you to lean. So she's like, um, you're, you know, you're leaning. You're not supposed to lean. And I'm like, I know, but I'm in a lot of pain right now. I'm sorry. Like, I literally cannot. I'm trying really hard to keep myself up. And, you know, she would just go and just like walk away. And then I had also meant, I also forgot to mention that day that there was a new person. I was, she was thrown at me. So I had to train her and I wasn't a trainer and only trainers were supposed to train new people. But I took on that responsibility and I stood with her all day while running the front, while, you know, staying in my, like, uh, listen, <laughs> I, I'm not a very boastful person. I was on freaking point, okay? I was in excruciating pain. I was training a girl that I was not certified to train. Even though I was new myself, I never left my POS other than to eat and put on a pad. I was, I ran my POS station and I helped her with hers. I was back and forth all day and I worked an eight hour shift, okay? I fucking... I, I, I was like the, I did, I was amazing. Okay. Despite me being in a lot, a lot of pain, I pushed through and I did my best and I hung out and I didn't leave that girl, stood with her, supported her, everything. So finally the end of my chef, mind you, still in pain. Finally, the end of my chef, I'm about to leave, and she's like, I need to talk to you in the back real quick. And I'm like, okay. So I come to the back, and I said, you know, what's what's going on? She said, so what's going on? What, what, what happened today? And I was like, what do you mean what happened today? She's like, you just, you just kind of like, you just kind of lost it out there. And I was like, what? And she's like, you you know, you, um, you just weren't, you weren't performing your best, you know, you were over here taking a long break, um, you know, you left poor, what was her name? Sorry, I don't remember your name. She's a really nice girl. Anyways, she's like, you left poor girl that shall not be named by herself. By herself. I was with that girl the entire day. I went nowhere other than to eat the freaking snack and take freaking pills. And she's like, you left her all by herself. You know, she needed you. She needed someone to help her and guide her and blah, blah, blah. Not a trainer, by the way. And um, and you just you just fell short. And, um, you know, I was told a lot of good things about you, but I have to say I'm just very underwhelmed by what I'm seeing. She said that literally verbatim. She was underwhelmed with me. I mean, I've been told some really shitty things in my life, but that one was probably the worst. Not worse than the Starbucks experience, but pretty up there, obviously, because I remembered it. You know, when something's so shitty, you remember that shit verbatim. I didn't say anything and I wanted to and I should have because I literally made the decision two seconds after she said all that. I was like, oh, bitch, I'm not coming to work tomorrow. Like I made the quickest decision I've ever made in my life. And I said, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not coming back. And so I was just like, okay. <laughs> and she's like, so going forward, you know, I, I need to see some, I need to see some improvement. I need to be dazzled or I need to see just, you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, do you think that we could work on that tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, of course. <laughs> and I grabbed on myself. I think I said goodbye like to all the people I actually liked because I knew for a damn fact I wasn't coming back and um, that ended my journey with Panera <laughs> but to be honest I've only ever done that three times in my life and the three times that I did it it was it was Starbucks Wendy's Panera and I guarantee you they were all for good reasons they were all for reasons where I literally was being t 
just completely disrespected and no one no one okay i don't care what you think no one has the right to talk to you that way or to treat you that way and they deserve you to walk out on them because that hopefully helps them to reflect on the shitty little person that they are and so yeah i have no regrets <laughs> um i mean obviously i would have loved to stay with the company more but um mm -mm, i would have i would have had to kill her <laughs> or transfer and i mean you know paneras aren't really that close to each other so it just it just wasn't a situation where i could have done anything else other than walk away so as unfortunate as it was like i said before i had a wonderful experience going in and it wasn't until she came in that everything kind of went to shit um other than the progression of me trying to get to other stations and that being a hassle it's a very fun job just in the sense that you get to be surrounded by you know i mean for me <laughs> i love bread <laughs> But you get to be you get to be surrounded by bread, and you get to be surrounded by pastries, and it's really not a hard job. There's lots of you know customizations, but it's just it's not that hard. The people can be a bit difficult, especially the older people, just because they don't understand how the certain customizations work or the pick two or things like that. Or a lot of times you'll get people that complain to you about how expensive it is and yet you're getting a little square sandwich. Um, but other than that, I mean. I actually I liked it until that now would I work at it again no just for the whole like dress policy how strict that it is that I stand at the register it's just not a job that was for me that was my story of working at Panera <laughs> so if you've ever worked for Panera or if you currently work for Panera I would love to hear all your stories please send me your stories I will have my email down below in my description don't be afraid to send me you know any funny stories any bad anything you want to I would love to be able to reach out and speak to people that have been through these situations and I hope that if you're currently in the situation you don't know what to do remember that you do not deserve to be treated the way that you the way that they are treating you you are a human being you deserve to be supported and loved and you you should be at a job where you feel so happy not like deliriously happy you know that's not a thing that's your dream job but <laughs> you should feel happy and comfortable and that is a very important thing that a lot of people need to know it starts with you things can change and you can make a difference but it starts with you and uh, and telling these people that it is not okay for them to treat you the way that they treat you so love yourself and i will see you guys on the next one see ya